Okay guys, so um, this video is going to go over some of the basics of ZBrush. Um, what I'm going to be covering is just how to set up uh, basic Z spheres, going over some of the tools, showing off some of the bits and pieces that you might need when using the software. Um, I will treat everyone the same in this, so I'm going to assume that nobody has used it before. Um, and this will just allow me to go through properly and explain what it is that you need to be doing, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do um, is just get rid of this, okay? So this is the light box. So when you want to get rid of the light box, all you need to do is click light box again, and that gets rid of it, okay? If we go over to here where we've got our brushes, we can find something called the Z-Sphere. The Z-Sphere was designed in ZBrush to make modeling a lot easier. Before this, we needed to use things like um, 3ds Max um, Blender to create a base model. Um, but when we created that base model, it took time. This allows you to streamline that process. Okay. So if I just drag the first Z-Sphere in, if I hold Shift, that will lock it with the line straight down the middle. Now, before I click anything, um, you're going to want to click Edit at the top. Okay. Now, making sure that you click edit is really important, because what that's going to allow you to do is actually edit the model. Otherwise, what happens is you just continue to draw shapes, you'll lock yourself out of the other shapes, and then you'd have to restart the document. So please do start by clicking edit. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is symmetry isn't on automatically. So if we click X on our keyboard, we now have symmetry. Okay. Moving around is fairly simple. Um, if you're on a laptop, you will have to load up one of the different interfaces. Uh, just to make sure that you have access to zoom, move, and frame. Now, frame puts the object straight in the center. Move acts like panning um, and allows you to move around the screen like so. And then zoom in and out is really important when we're working on these models. Okay. To move around the model, you're going to want to just click on some empty space on the screen, and that will allow you to move around the model itself. Okay. Now. What we're going to do is we're just going to create a very basic uh, creature, I suppose. Um, I haven't really got much of a plan for this, um, but when you start with Z-Spheres, you're only trying to get the rough base model. So by clicking, uh, I create another shape. When you see that green circle, that means that you're in the center of the shape and symmetry no longer applies. As I move around to the edges, uh, this shows that obviously I'm opposite side of the shape. Okay? Now the move, scale and rotate tool up here apply to your model. So if I click move, it will allow me to move that circle. If I click scale, it will allow me to scale that circle. If I rotate, we don't need to look at just yet. Um, when we want to draw again, we go back to draw. So what I'll do, I'll create a um, almost like a body for uh, a simple animal. Um, and then we'll kind of move forward from there. Okay, so um, what I'm going to need to do um, what's happened at the moment, you don't want this here. That's going to cause problems for your shape later down the line. Um, and we don't want that, okay? So why it did that, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but we'll try the drawing process again, uh, and we'll see what sort of happens. Now, for whatever reason, um, it was playing up. So there you go, now it's working. All right, so if we do that, move that along, Okay, this will make up the, the bulk of our body. Um, if you want to add things like bends, you just need to tap, turning that into a sphere. And this will allow you to move that part as well. Okay, so if we consider this is the length of the body, this would be the kind of the neck area, the head area. We want to put some um, some joints here. And remember, you're not creating the actual sort of like joints and stuff. This is just something to get you thinking about. Uh, where things are going to go, how they're going to work, um, and moving out from there. The important thing is that when you're doing this, you make sure there's enough space so that when it comes to animate, uh, you don't have to try and differentiate between two close parts of the model. So by that, what I mean is, um, you know, making sure that we have um, a decent gap between the torso and the actual uh, extremity, so things like legs and stuff like that. Okay. Um, as you can see, uh, you can do this very quickly, and we'll do some kind of strange leg things here. So if I consider this my kind of uh, basis, all right, so that's pretty good. I uh, just need to add on a bit here for sort of like the head, 
Um, and obviously what you guys will have done is you'll have a decent concept model that will make things a little bit easier for yourself than what I'm doing here, which is just doing it off the, uh, the freehand. So this is where obviously the rotate could come in handy. Um, you can move things up and down to make sure that um, they're in the right place for you. Okay. Now, when we're happy with the model, we have to do two things. Um, first of all, we click A. So I'll do that now. And that turns it into the mesh we're going to be working with. Now, if you're not happy with that mesh, you can click A again and go back and edit it. Where you can't edit it is when you do the next bit, which is make this poly mesh freely. Once you've done that, that opens up all the brushes that you can use in ZBrush. Now, this is where I can start going into some of those more advanced tools. The first thing I would do is I turn it from matcap red here to matcap grey. Um, the reason being is it's just a lot easier to work with matcap grey than it is any other um, sort of tools because it gives you a good idea of the values, so the shadows, the lights, um, as well as that, it allows you to create um, things a little bit easier. So. Um, the first thing we're going to do is use the clay brush. I advise against using the standard brush. We're going to open up the uh, draw size and we're going to lower the intensity. And the first thing we're going to do is just hold shift. I'm just going to smooth off those harder um, edges. This is my own personal preference. This is what I like to do. Uh, I find it harder to see the shape itself when we're working with um, 3D, when it's got all the lines for the topology. Now, I can't click the topology aspect, that'll be somewhere else, but for yourselves, you'll be able to click uh, the wireframe, the topology, and actually see how many polygons you've got. The first thing I would do is go to geometry and I would divide it. Um, the reason being is currently it has very low resolution um, and you want to be able to um, sort of add things to it. Now, personally, uh, I find using the clay tool sort of the easiest way, I would lower the intensity and I would start working um, the model. So thinking about things like muscle structure um, and how this might look in the grand scheme of things. Uh, you don't need to add detail or think about adding detail to a little bit later on when you've got a higher poly model. Um, you should start with the basics and then work your way up. Okay, so if I just think about um, how it's going to look, it may be that my uh, brush is slightly too large at the moment, but that's fine. We can work with that if there's a problem. Now, if we think about the fact that, uh, you know, making a very basic model, as you can see, I've purposely missed off things like feet and stuff like that, because I'll be honest with you, I don't really want to get too much into that space. Now, where we're looking at, like, the head and stuff, that's not really going to work, um, so we'll have to think a little bit more about that, okay? Other useful tools that you can use are things like the Clay Build-Up tool. This will allow you to um, build in slightly more, uh, if you like, less refined edges, but it's very good for building up that, that clay base, uh, especially around things like muscles and stuff straight away, which you can then smooth out later. Um, it also allows you to add in things like details, so we could think about like the spine here. Um, we know that's probably going to jut out a bit, and it allows us to build onto that. Again, if you hold shift, you can then smooth these out after. However, the fastest way to do this is to click back onto the clay tool and start working your way into this uh, once you've got that kind of base outline. Okay. Um, as I said, we probably won't get around to finishing this because the idea is going to be just show you some of the tools. Now, one of the most important things when you're working in 3D is to obviously continue moving around the object, making sure that although it looks right from the sides, it also looks all right from the front, um, and continue building into this. Um, other useful tools are things like the Move tool. Uh, the Move tool allows you to move the topology mesh. Don't use these ones here, that'll move the whole model. Um, but the Move tool itself allows you to go larger, and obviously move things around as and when you want to. Okay, so it might be that you decide that comes here, the rib cage comes out a bit, you might decide to flatten or raise the spine slightly. It really depends on you as an individual how you would like to work with this mesh. It's a problem, problem solving process, so it's very important. H polish is another very good uh, tool, it allows you to get those um, harder edges and start working into um, the model a little bit. So if you find that it's too squidgy, too soft, 
I would advise using the H polish tool. Um, but there are other tools that do the same thing or similar things such as flatten and stuff like that. But as you can see, this allows me to uh, all flatten out and polish up the model itself. Now, if you imagine this would be the same as using something maybe like a palette knife um, and working your way into this model. Okay, um, that's that. So then as well, uh, it's not on here, but if you click the letter of what you're looking for, we're looking for damn standard. Um, damn standard is very good at drawing into a model. And if you hold Alt, it allows you to draw out of the model. So this can be quite good later on um, when we're looking at things like, um, you know, firming things up, uh, drawing things in, uh, getting those finer details in there. Um, but that's not something we'll need to look at straight away in this particular model. Um, it's just something that you can consider later down the line. Now, those are some of the basic tools you can use. Now, you can make pretty much anything using just that small selection of tools in ZBrush. There are loads of other things we can use um, that I will cover, uh, but probably not in this tutorial. Um, but the whole process of designing in ZBrush is about taking your time and thinking and problem solving as you go. So if you notice that certain things aren't working, you need things to, uh, you need to build into things. So what you can do is you can start thinking about how that might look um, in the actual model itself and then start building into it. Now, I'm going for a very kind of basic model here because, um, you know, that's kind of what I want to do. Um, and the plan is to just kind of build into it. Uh, I'll just do some more of it, just so you can kind of see these tools in action. Um, see, this is where it works in two ways. I've used the H polish tool. I could have used the move tool. Um, both would have worked in this scenario. Um, but basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to slowly build into it. Now, remember, this isn't meant to be a rushed process. And instead, what you're supposed to do is you're actually supposed to, um, you know, really think about, uh, you know, what it is you're trying to create how this might work um, and and build into it from there basically. Okay, so this is gonna be a very um, simple model as I mentioned before. Uh, I'll hollow out the eye sockets because I'm gonna talk about how to insert things in just a moment. Um, and as I said, you know, it's about taking your time, building into it uh, and, you know, when you get to a point where you're like, okay, I can't really add anything more to this. This is when you would take it up another division level or, and you guys have probably heard me talk about this multiple times in class, it's about DynaMeshing. Now to DynaMesh, we need to be on one division layer, so you need to click Delete Lower, and then we can DynaMesh it. Now the resolution controls the amount of polygons in there, but we want to DynaMesh, and as you can see, it's lowered the resolution because we divided it. So if I up the resolution slightly and then DynaMesh, this is gonna allow me to have more polygons in there. Now, if I frame it, I wanna zoom in, and let's just focus a little bit on the face and see if we can't add a bit more to this here, okay? Now, this is where it comes down to using a smaller brush. And as I said, taking the time. I think one of the things that everyone's kind of been in for at the moment is you'll want to rush um, and get something. But it's all about taking your time and making sure it looks good. Remember, this is an artistic process. Um, you know, it does take a bit of time. It's not meant to be quick. It is meant to be a um, you know a long process, so it is important that you're thinking about the 3D model itself, uh, what it could look like, what it should look like, and going from there. Okay, so haven't been on this very long, but already it's looking a little bit better. Um, you can use like the smooth tool to smooth things out. However, as I said to you guys before, I've just used the clay tool and I've built things in. Now this is where you can start looking at your, um, if you like, your other, um, your other tools that are available. Um, some that are quite useful, although they do cause a few problems with topology if you're not uh, clever in how you use them. Some tools you can use are things like the pinch tool. Um, what pinch will do is it will allow you to, if you like, sharpen those aspects to a point. Um, but it's very good for refining. Um, the edges of things, if you've got things like noses, maybe like the edge of your lips, um, in this character, I don't know if they are lips, but you know what I mean. Um, and as I said, like, you know, this is still quite low poly, there's not really much going on here, um, 
it's just meant to be a basic uh, showcase of you know what you could do and remember if you hold alt you can take it out of things as well so if you want to uh, sharpen aspects of the model by taking bits out um, and then hitting the clay build up tool and smoothing the edges of those down uh, what you'll find is you end up getting those nice um, aspects you want but remember look at it from all sides because it may be that you know what you're doing doesn't really work um, so you do need to have a look on multiple sides to see what it is you can do there Okay, um, so that's kind of those bits covered in a fairly decent amount of detail, I think. Um, so let's look at some of the aspects that we can we can do when we do this. Now, as I said, this won't be a finished model, um, but I do think it's really important to showcase these things to you guys so that you've got these as an option. I would advise against, at this stage, doing open mouth characters. Um, I think they're quite challenging. You'd have to do things like look at the, um, you know, look, look at things like drawing individual teeth in there and stuff like that. But as you can see, it's a basic kind of face that's not too bad. It doesn't really match the rest of the body. I'd need to extend the neck, but we're just looking at the face in this moment in time. Okay, so if I move across and zoom back in there, um, the next thing I'm going to do is add in eyes. So for that, if we go to subtool, if you go to insert, and we grab a sphere, you notice you get a very large sphere, but you can see it's created a separate subtool. If you think of these as layers in Photoshop, it will help a lot. So the first thing I'm going to do is move it across, and I'm going to click the yellow square, and I'm going to scale it right down. Now the idea is this is going to go into the head, um, stick out the sides, but I might need to scale that a bit more. Yeah, probably. And I will scale that up. Okay, now when you're happy with it in the position it's in, uh, you can duplicate it. And then if you duplicate it, it'll be in exactly the same place. So I would then turn it around, get your move tool, and I'll just move it straight across. And I would then fit it. Oh, it hasn't done it for whatever reason. If we grab that's why, because it turned the... Uh, the eye off. If the eye is off on a model, then uh, what happens is, you know, uh, you can't see it anymore. Again, very similar to layers. So if we click our main design again, um, you'll start to see that, yep, yeah, we've got the eyes in there, and that helps a lot. Okay, now this can be used for multiple things. You can just add things like thorns, teeth, all kinds of wonderful things that, that will help your model in the long run okay so let's just assume for a minute that we didn't want an aspect of our model so let's say that we wanted to get rid of these front arms imagine i didn't like them and i wanted to start fresh with those what you can do is if you hold con oops, sorry, if you go back to draw hold control you can mask aspects of your model now this is a very long-winded way of um and you can draw that mask as well by the way if you want to be a bit more softer or more precise um, but if I, for example, decide that, uh, you know, I don't want these front legs, uh, there is a process to do this. So you mask it by holding control and highlighting the area you don't want anymore. From there, you go down to masking, which is here. We would then inverse the mask. So the bit we want to keep is masked. We would then go to visibility and hide unmasked. Okay, so we've now hidden those. So from there, what we do is go to Geometry, Modify Topology, and Delete the Hidden Objects. Now what happens is, that then leaves us with these massive giant holes. That's not a problem, because what we can do is we can then go back to Geometry, we can go to uh, Dynamesh, and if it's already orange like this, all you need to do is hold, hold on, save. All we need to do is hold control and drag. If it's not orange, just click it once, like so. And then what that does is that rebuilds the mesh and it gets rid of this. Now, where I went wrong here is I didn't mask this off properly. So what's happened is it's left me with quite a hideous, um, hideous aspect here with holes in it and all sorts. Now, what you can do is you can just use the move tool um, or the H polish tool, something like that, uh, move it into the model um, like so, okay, probably not going to work, uh, potentially we then hold alt, no, 
basically, if you can get rid of those aspects, uh, you may have to mask it off again and do it that way. Um, but basically, if you get a small enough brush, I'm not going to do that now. If you get a small enough brush, you can push that into the model and then dynamesh it again. But in this case, we won't bother with that. And what we'll do instead is we'll just kind of smooth them off. And that's how you would delete aspects of your model. To re-add things in, you just do the same thing again. Um, so let me think, we've covered subtools, inserting, we've talked about Dynamesh, we've talked about divisions, we've talked about um, the basic tools we can use. Okay. Um, if you find that your model itself is too massive, if you've divided it too many times, there are lots of things that you can do, um, like dynameshing it at a lower resolution. You can also go to geometry, and this is what we'll use when we take our low poly versions out. You can go to Z remesher, you can set the poly count to this one's 5000, and you can Z remesh. And what that does is you can see who is thinking about it, so don't always think it's crashed. Sometimes it's just thinking about the model itself. And as we go through, what it's going to do is it is going to recalculate our poly count and lower it all the way down for us, okay? So obviously this is not the best model in the world. You can see that it doesn't look particularly good, um, but it does what we need to do. So this is now 5,000 polygons. So if we were to export this in something like 3ds Max, this would work really nicely. Um, and this is what you'll be doing when you take your low poly models into games themselves. Uh, we will talk about texture and stuff at a later date, um, but for the time being, here is just a basic model and the tools that you can use. Thanks for listening, guys. Let me know if you have any questions.